Welcome to another tech tip. Today we focus on the Pentec alternator. This is a great add-on to add to a lead lag pump system and will help balance the wear of both pumps. To begin let's set up a simple lead lag pump system. This can easily be set up with programming, no wiring needed. To begin the initial programming is the standard. The question is at what pressure are the pumps to maintain? Default is 60 pounds of pressure. Should the system need a different pressure or to change the lag pressure first check to see if the unit is locked. A skeleton key symbol in the upper right corner of the screen would indicate the unit is locked. To unlock the unit press password and enter the default code found in the manual, 4 sevens. Once the keypad is unlocked press menu. The first screen to appear will be settings. Press enter. Now to change the pressure scroll to set points and press enter. Now choose what pressure we need to change. Internal set point is the main pressure. External set point is the quote lag pressure influenced by the input status. To change the pressure the left and right arrow keys change position and up down arrow keys change the numbers. Once you have the pressure set press enter to save. Pressing the status button will take you back to the main screen directly. Now what of the lag pressure and how do we program the lag or second pump? First the lag pressure is the minimum pressure you wish the system to maintain. To set this pressure in a simple lead lag system follow the same procedure just outlined. Typically, this is 5 pounds less than the main set point of the lead pump. However, this could be set to the same pressure as the lead pump but then both would always run during a demand. You see the point is for the lag pump to only run during a high demand thus is least a 5 pound difference. Also note the lag pump will by default drop 5 pounds of pressure below the lag pressure set point before engaging the pump. Giving you a pressure running range of 60 to 50 pounds of pressure if defaults are used. Here you see the alternator accessory, this is a simple 24-hour counter that will send a signal to the drives connected to the device and then alternate and send voltage to the other drive connected. This altering in theory allows for equalized wear to the pumps. The alternator has a lit indicator to show what pump is lead and, on the faceplate, also has an alternate or off switch. The unit is powered by 115 volt power supply with a 6-foot cord. It is a NEMA 1 enclosure so should be indoors or in a protected environment. It also has four terminal blocks to connect to the drives. Connections only require an 18 gauge wire as this is a DC low voltage output. The alternator is a simple device that requires only 120 volts to connect to. Once it is wired, plug it in and switch from off to alternate. Pump 1 indicator should illuminate and pump 1 will run the primary pressure set point. Now a question I often hear is how to check or prompt the unit to switch to pump 2. The unfortunate fact is this is a simple 24-hour counter. Which literally means someone would have to wait and check 24 hours later to ensure the alternator switches to pump 2 and that the systems is running properly to the lead lag function. First thing to locate is the onboard power supply and the inputs of the IntelliDrive. They are highlighted here in the illustration. Let's talk a minute about what the inputs are and can do. First, they are a digital signal. Either there is power or no power present. Next what do we want the IntelliDrive to do when it sees the voltage? The drive could run, fault, or maintain a different pressure. In this case we want to run at the external set point. Here we see the connections to the drive. I used wire of different color to help make this visually stand out better. The drawing on the right is a close-up of the connections needed. One orange wire is a jumper wire from the input to the negative connection of the onboard power supply. The other orange wire is connected to the positive onboard power supply the other end connected to the alternator. This is the signal power we need to trigger the input. 
Now the black wire which you see is connected to the alternator and the input. This is the signal wire that when the alternator relay closes passes the voltage from the onboard power supply to the input completing the circuit and the drive then reacts. Here you see on the left the illustration from the owner's manual showing the connections we just discussed. Depending on the alternator the relay for pump 1 will be open or closed. If open the relay sees no voltage and will run at the internal set point. When the relay closes voltage will be present and the relay will do as programmed. The illustration on the right is the instruction that come with the alternator. You will notice that the connections photographed here are the same as the illustration on the left shows. Now this might be redundant but before programming the drive it is good to understand what the drive must do when it sees voltage. Here we are wanting to run as a lag pump. So, setting the drive input to external pressure will accomplish this. To program the drive the first thing you may have to do is unlock the drive. Pressing the password key four zeros will appear. The code is noted in the owner's manual and the password has not been changed is 4 sevens and press enter. Once unlocked scroll down using the arrow keys to set points, this should be the first screen when you first enter the main menu. Then press enter. We need to set the lag pressure as we previously discussed. Once you have the lag pressure set press the back arrow key till you see set points again. Using the arrow keys scroll down to I slash O. Press enter. Now what input did you connect the sensor to? If you need to scroll, again use the up and down arrow keys to change the menu. Once you have the input you are using press enter. This will bring you into the input programming. You will notice it will say unused. Press enter and then using the arrow keys scroll to highlight external pressure. Press enter to save the selection. Press the status key to quickly exit to the main screen. Now you are ready to test the operation on the system. Open a valve to start the drawdown of pressure slowly. We want to go slow to ensure we see the internal set point trigger. Once the system fires on the primary or internal set point default is 60, we want to draw more water slowly to see the pressure drop and trigger the external set point. Remember the default trigger to start the lag pump will be 5 psi less than the external set point. Once the lag runs close the water demand to ensure both pumps go to sleep properly. Now how do you test the timer? Well, it is a 24-hour timer and sorry to say you would have to check back 24 hours later. The easier answer is to contact the customer and proof that the alternator is now highlighting pump 2. As well what the customer thought the test procedure, we just did previously running the water to ensure the internal and external set points are reacting as expected. And with that congratulations you have programmed and installed the alternator. For more information, please refer to the owner's manual. Thank you and see you next tech tip.